Christ wants to be sure. Do we really know what we are getting into here? We say, yes, we love you, Lord. Then Christ calls us to serve others. Lord, help us to witness to your love in the ways in which we care for others. Amen. Amen. Our praise song this morning, please join in, is number 2227, We Are the Body of Christ, or again, the words shall be on the screens. Please take this moment to pass the peace of Christ to friend, neighbor, and stranger. Do so by waving or typing in the commands if you're watching this live stream. We all worship together. Peace.
Welcome to Williamston United Methodist Church. The God who welcomes us all welcomes you here. In keeping with the social justice principles of the United Methodist Church and the transformative spirit of the gospel, we begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather is the ancestral territory of the Anishinaabe people. The Anishinaabe are a group of culturally related nations that are the first peoples of the land of Michigan, including the Potawatomi, Ojibwe, Adawa, and Mississauga peoples. We recognize the injustices indigenous communities face and call to be collaborators in the work of justice and respectful co-stewards of the land we call home. I'm Bob Bappert, and I will be your liturgist today. And Johnny Ellis, as always, is leading in music. And I'm Reverend Sari Brown. I'm the pastor of this caring and loving congregation. Um, now that we're amplified and I, I think hopefully live streaming, um, <laughs> good, then I don't want to make you wait any longer. You're, we're all very anxious to sing happy birthday to Maya. So can we sing happy birthday to Maya? <laughs> Let's do it. celebrate with both of you and, and celebrate your beautiful lives. I hear that uh, Maya's birthday is means she's no longer a baby. She's officially um, gone out of baby status now. <laughs> right to adulthood. <laughs> yeah. Um, so today we're going to be, um, this, this service day is, is basically focused on sharing about Stephen ministry. That's the big theme here today and um, I think it's a really good time to be um, making you all more aware of Stephen Ministry, which is a, a caring lay ministry for one-on-one -on -one relationships, um, caring relationships with people that are going through difficult times and need some extra support. And I think it's a good time as, um, as I'm going to be going on, to, going on maternity leave, um, just to make you aware of all the resources in our congregation um, for caring for each other. Um, for now, I'm still here. I'll be here for possibly up to two more Sundays, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'll, of course, keep you all posted and appreciate your prayers during this time um, as I near the birth. And um, other than that, I just want to invite Sue Kaiser up. Yes, Sue Kaiser, for an announcement about script. Oh, good, it's caught on my earring. <laughs> um, I know Dawn was here last week and talked about script, introduced it. And um, I don't know if all of you were here, but those of you who weren't, for a simple version, script is a program where we can raise money for Open Table by purchasing gift cards that you would use anyway. And the companies give a percentage back. To the church. We have been piloting the program through the Finance and Administrative Board with five of us for the past, I don't know, six, eight months, and we've raised almost $500. So it's a program that is, uh, it's a win-win. Um, I've got information out in the um, room out there that I'll be out there if you weren't here last week if you want to pick the information up if you want to ask me questions there's two ways 
One of them is a physical card, just like any other gift card, credit card. Um, those can be ordered and Dawn will be here to deliver them on a, on a Sunday each month, if that's the way people go. Personally, I love the e-cards. I have a phone with probably 20 gift cards on it. When I go into a store, I buy it, I pull it up, I simply show it to them, they put the numbers in or scan it, depending on which they need to do, it's done. Um, buying them is simple. Buying them is immediate with e-cards. With e if I can stand in line at a store, I can sit at a table in a restaurant, and I can order a card, and as soon as I order it, it's on my phone and ready to be used. Some of them will give as much as 20%. Uh, they have specials um, periodically. And some of them give 16, 18, 20%. So if you order a $10, uh, $100 card, that's 16, 17, $18 for the church. And all it costs you, if it's hooked to your bank account, is 15 cents. And it doesn't matter whether you order one card or 10, it's 15 cents. So it's a program that is, is just amazing. Um, graduations are coming up. If you have graduates that you know that you're gonna be giving gift cards to, this is a perfect opportunity to sign up and order a physical card. Dawn, um, if they're ordered by the 10th of May, she will be here on the 15th of May to hand them out. She is in charge of this program, so physical cards are mailed to her and then she hands them out. But there's birthdays, and there's just, um, Ed and I use cards at everything. Restaurants, um, Meyer. you can use them to buy your um, prescriptions. I checked with D&W, and you can do that. I imagine you can do that at Meyer. So it, it's just a program that is an opportunity to raise money for open table and it doesn't cost us anything. See me out there and I'll, ask, I'll show you what I've got. I'll, show, I'll answer any questions that you have and you can pick up the information and get signed up. We had three people sign up from last Sunday, so we're on our way. Thank you, sounds good. You may rise in body and spirit for our next hymn, which is Let Us Break Bread Together, found at number 618 of the Red Hymnal, or again on the screens. Oh, 
And you may be seated. And let us pray. God of power and might, let your love shine on us and through us to others. Take the blindness from our eyes and our hearts. Give us the joy of knowing and serving you in all that we say, think, and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of John or gospel of John? <laughs> Either one Either is good. One. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Later, Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and the two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I am going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. And they set out in a boat, but throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't recognize that it was Jesus. And Jesus called to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, no. He said, cast your net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did, and there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from shore, only about 100 yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them, yet the net hadn't torn even with so many fish. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. And he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? And he replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and another will tie your belt and lead you where you don't want to go. He said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And after saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Hi, I'm Kate Lamore. I'm a Stephen leader, and I have a story for you. I'm going to sit down because this involves using my hands. More technology issues. Okay. Well, it's the first of May, praise God, so let's think about flowers. I went to a greenhouse with my grandchildren yesterday, and my two-year-old grandson, Sasha, I, I was like amazed by all the beautiful flowers, just everywhere you look, gorgeous flowers. But the two-year-old thought the coolest thing was to look up at the hanging pots, and they were drip, drip, dripping, water down to the ground and he would stand under them and let them drip on his head then he would <laughs> run away run back and do it again over and over and over but <laughs> that's part of the fun you know, different people get joy out of different things so also he wanted to do everything I was doing so when I took flowers and put them on my cart he wanted to also take flowers and put them on the cart. So I came home with a lot of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this little marigold is going to help us tell the story of how we all need change in order to grow. So a little flower, I notice that some of your roots are coming out of this little container. I think it might be time to switch you out to a bigger container with more soil in it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I've been in this container ever since I was a seed and I'm perfectly happy here. No thanks, Kate, I don't think I need your help right now. Well, I understand, change can be scary. No, I'm growing just fine. I'm okay. Well. Roots need a lot of soil to grow, and I'm afraid if, if we don't switch you to a bigger container, you're going to, your roots are going to get stunted. Well, okay, um, I guess I'll give it a chance. I'll be very, very careful with your roots. And I'm going to give it a little water just to make sure that it gets settled in here. There. That's better. Well, like this flower, not all of our growth happens on the outside where we can see it. A lot of it happens inside when we're growing in the spirit. And like this flower, we need to make room in our lives to, to grow our spirits. One of the most beautiful ways we can do that is by reaching out and connecting with each other. As Stephen ministers, we sometimes connect with people who are going through changes that can be kind of unsettling and scary. We can all count on changes happening in our lives. That's the one thing we can count on. But when we reach out and connect with each other, we can not only get through these changes, but we can grow from them. And I know that anybody who's ever had a Stephen minister, or who has been a Stephen minister, Jane and um, John and Linda Dunahoe, Coralie and Bob and Julie, <laughs> thank you, are our cur current Stephen ministers and myself. And there are other people in the congregation who've been Stephen ministers who, who know this is true, that the person receiving the care is not the only one that grows from the experience. The Stephen minister also grows tremendously in spirit just by what the, the person who's receiving the care can share with them. So 
let's grow our community of God by being open to giving and receiving help. Thank you for listening. And enjoy your flowers. <laughs>join me for a moment of preparation to preach. God, may we open ourselves completely to receive your goodness, your care, your love today as we also open ourselves to be strengthened and prepared by you to give this care and love and share this goodness with all around us. Amen. Amen. So yes, on this first day of May, warm weather finally, finally seems to be deciding to unpack its bags bit by bit and new flowers are pushing curious heads up through the ground, and the Spirit is breathing some 
life into some of our tired bones. It is a glorious moment to recognize the power of the Stephen ministry of this church. Stephen ministers, as we've shared, are lay people who receive special training to share Christ's love and walk with others in a special caring way through particularly intense seasons of their lives with fellow church members, perhaps people who are sometimes experiencing particularly long and dark winters in the seasons of their life. And the caregivers and receivers reach together towards spring by putting one foot in front of the other in weekly one-on-one -on -one conversations of deep connection and empathetic listening until that they feel that this form of the relationship is complete. It's also a fitting day to be highlighting this ministry. As I said, it's my maternity leave is, a, is, is approaching fast, and it's the last Sunday that I had kind of marked as more likely than not to be in church after this Sunday. It's all up in the air. Um, and, you know, it's at any time in a pastor's ministry, it's incredibly reassuring and supportive to know that there's a capable, caring team of Stephen ministers in the congregation working with me. But it's especially so on the cusp of a 12-week maternity leave when I'll have to focus completely on taking care of a new baby. The care of the whole community for each other is what makes a church like ours such a hope-bearing, life-giving, safe haven for those who are struggling, for those who are facing big changes, and such a source of continual growth and joy as we experience both holding and being held in community. Stephen ministers are kind of like these quiet, behind-the-scenes workers that vitally strengthen this web of care that seeks to catch all of us up in the sure knowledge of God's love experienced through human hearts and ears and hands. When Jesus returned from his brief but brutal three-day leave to the realm of death, he appeared to his followers as one who cares, who feeds, who reassures. And this is part of what he had always done, of course. But he was particularly focused now on caregiving, Last week, we read about how he came among them when they had locked themselves away in fear and breathed on them, reminded them of the power of the Spirit that is always present with each breath, even as they were clenching and holding their breath in fear. And now he shows up on the beach and reminds them to trust they will find an abundant catch of fish when they need it. And he serves it, grilled up on the fire with bread, because they'll also need literal nourishment for this difficult journey of change and unexpected twists and turned, turns that lies ahead. And he did all this not to install himself as the one great dispenser of all care and comfort and wise reminders and nourishing meals, but to remind them that they are all capable and called, both capable and called, to do this for each other. Jesus promised to be with us always in spirit. And I know that many of us feel and know this to be true. 
But we also need Christ in human form with us. Someone with flesh and bones to look into our eyes, to hug us, to cook for us, to talk with us and fall into step beside us as we walk along what might be a rough and icy path of a winter season. And then, of course, to stop and celebrate with us the first flowers of spring. Of course, pastors are not Jesus, and I I think we all know that, but there is a parallel here to the primary spiritual leader of a community modeling care of self and others and equipping disciples, equipping people in the community to do likewise. And then letting the Spirit work its magic in the caring community, even when that leader cannot always be present. The prodigal catch of fish that fit in the net without breaking is a perfect metaphor for the abundance that we find when we lean in to the help and the support of the community. It doesn't matter how many tragedies are striking, how many people need support, how many people are hungry and want some fish. There is always enough. When Peter was caught up in ecstasy, realizing that Jesus had appeared to them once again and splashed his way to shore in a questionably clothed state like a little kid, (laughs) he wanted to prove his faithfulness to his teacher, who he had rejected and abandoned in a moment of terror and fear and grief. And all Jesus says... He says it three times, it's so important, is do you love me? Okay, good. Then feed my sheep. This is not a special role just for Peter, the rock upon whom the church was built. It is a pattern of life for all of us. If we love Jesus... We feed each other in all the literal and symbolic ways that implies. And then at some point, as Jesus predicts will happen at the end of Peter's life, we are weak and helpless and need to be fed. We take turns. We move through seasons and cycles like this, and somehow there is always enough. What's beautiful about this abundance is not only how available help and care is for each of us when we need it, but how richly also we experience the gifts of caring when we are on the giving in of that relationship. So when you're on the needing end, never feel like you shouldn't be a burden or aren't one of those cases that really deserves help, that really deserves or needs one-on-one care. Never feel like you might be too much for someone to handle. It is a gift when we give others the opportunity to care for us. And Stephen ministers are ones who know particularly well this give and take of caring relationships. As Bob Baffert will share more about, I'm sure, in his testimonial right after this. They're usually people who have been receivers of one-on-one care in a difficult time. And then they become trained in giving it, because doing so enriches their lives so much. They grow in skills of empathy. They witness God's light and wisdom in others. They discover hope 
with someone. Like two children discovering tulips and daffodils, or maybe the droplets falling from the hanging plants, <laughs> like, like Kate's grandson. As we go forth into this spring, each with our own needs to feel held and cared for, as well as our own needs to focus in different ways on caring for others. Let us trust that the nets of our community are strong, strong enough to hold us all, that the catch of God's grace is abundant, and that when we feed each other, we will be fed. Amen. So as Pastor Siri had mentioned, I have volunteered this morning to share with you my experience with Stephen Ministry. And mine is one of those that um, is twofold because some years ago, I was under the care of a Stephen Minister and would probably be a different person today had that not happened. So, Peter, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. I don't exactly remember when the Stephen Ministry Program came to Williamson United, the Methodist Church, but I, I know it was more than 30 years ago, more than half of my lifetime. Stephen Ministry is a program that basically consists of lay people who receive special training to help support, encourage, pray for, and care for people in crisis. These crises can manifest themselves in different ways. And care receivers may be struggling with financial difficulties, health issues, marriage issues, growing older, the loss of a loved one, be them person or pet, and the list goes on. So many of us live in crisis daily and maybe don't even realize it. It was that person 30, 33 years ago, I was that person 33 years ago, and I was dealing with a little girl, and you'll forgive me if I get emotional. It was then, um, 33 years ago, when my then wife Cindy and I were dealing with a little girl <laughs> with special needs. And to stay, say special needs, though it's, to say special needs, though, is putting the term lightly. She was with us a mere 33 months but that time was a whirlwind of hospital stays, doctor visits, surgeries, both here and in Detroit, physical and occupational therapists, and the living room of our home equipped like a pediatric intensive care unit. You're getting the picture. I was the employed provider and Cindy stayed home with Caitlin, our daughter, and our two boys, Greg and Andy, working fully as hard as I was, and fair to say that we were in crisis. <laughs> our pastor, Reverend Alona, saw the crisis, and though I don't remember exactly when, through her I was paired with a Stephen minister. And he and I met most weeks for breakfast at a local restaurant, each session for about an hour or so, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little shorter, and we talked about my struggles and needs and wants, and he listened intently and then reflected back to me 
the things that I told him to be clear that he fully understood my situations. Then we'd pray. And he wasn't there to fix anything. That was up to God and myself. He was there to share and to care. Again, I forget how many weeks or months we met, but I'll never forget his love and commitment to me and to Stephen Ministry. He truly helped me to get through that crisis. So today, I stand here a Stephen Minister, almost fully trained. That keeps going on and on and on. I think anybody here who's a Stephen minister would attest to that. And I've already had the privilege of having my first care receiver. And though I can't share details of the relationship with about my care receiver, I can share that the experience has certainly been one of growth in spiritually and in friendship. Kind of a common side effect of Steve and ministry, this two-way relationship of both the care receiver and the caregiver growing out of the relationship. So the message from me today is this. We all go through crises from time to time. Some we can handle ourselves, but in some we need a little help. Through Stephen Minister, though Stephen ministers won't solve your problems, we are here to care for you, and you don't have to be alone. God will be with you, and your Stephen ministers will be there for you. Each one of these is committed. I think there are rolling pictures here, but each one of these Stephen ministers is committed to caring relationships when needed. Let us know if you need help. That's why we're here. And we know, and who knows rather, someday you may even be called to become a Stephen minister. I think, yes, Kate. Thank you so much for sharing your story, your witness, Bob. I invite you to join us now in a prayer for our church's Stephen ministry. There will be a couple responsive parts as well. Loving God, as your chosen people, holy and dearly loved by you, we ask for your guidance and blessing on our Stephen ministry. We pray for our Stephen leaders and Stephen ministers that they may be clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Guide their leadership and their caring work and be with them through the joys and challenges of their ministry. We pray that individuals in our congregation with the gifts and abilities to become Stephen ministers may be moved by your spirit to come forward and serve. And we pray that each of us, during, during the difficult, difficult times in our lives, lives will recognize our need, need to receive care from others and be, and be willing, willing to accept your, your care through our brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ. As we participate in Stephen ministry, help us to remember that over all these Christian virtues, we need to put on love, the tie that binds us as a community of believers. And whatever we do, in word or in deed, we do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God our Father through him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray as we prepare for our offering. May the gifts we offer this day, kind God, bring joy to those whose mornings are hopeless. Feed those whose noontimes are filled with hunger and bring peace to those whose nights are surrounded by fears and worries. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Let us join in a responsive prayer together. Bring to God all the fears and angers you have. Bring to God the sadness you feel. God will heal your life. Bring to God the loneliness and sorrow. God will heal your life. Do not be afraid, for Christ has called you. Christ brings you to life. Reach out in service and love to others. Christ brings new life to all. Rejoice, sing with joy. God heals us.
And let us pray also for these specific requests that we're lifting up on our live stream, in our hearts, and here now. We request prayers of divine protection and smooth arrangements for Kim Roth as she drives to Virginia to see her elderly parents who are ill. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up prayers for Gail's sister, who is having ongoing medical issues and is having another procedure this week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up Brad. Cameron's cousin, Zachary Painter, as he gets ready to go to college. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And I believe that's also Lord in our gratitude. Hear our prayer. <laughs> we give thanks that Carol is home and healing, Carol Bappert, and prayers for patience and understanding for her and her caregiver. <laughs> so we'll say, Lord, in your mercy, Lord, and Lord, in our gratitude. Lord, and we pray for joy for the life of Maya, who is turning 18 today. Lord, in our gratitude. Lord, we lift all of these up to our caring and loving God who does hear and hold every prayer. Amen. Let us continue in prayer with the words Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, we honor your holy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We invite you now to prepare to come to this communion table, just as we would be drawn to gather around a fire on a cold morning where some mysterious, generous soul is cooking fish to share with everyone. We are all in need of the grace of this meal, and we are all called to feed each other. So all are welcome at this open table. I invite you to join with me now in the great thanksgiving. May the God of gracious moments, oh, let me make sure it gets to the part where, <laughs> where you, you can respond. I think it's just one or I guess two heads. May the God of gracious moments be with you. And also with you. Lift your hearts to God, children of love and hope. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us join our voices with all creation to sing glad praises to our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You looked, and in the midst of chaos, you heard the Spirit singing creation into existence. Wondrous God. Majestic eagles and tiny hummingbirds, graceful giraffes and awkward aardvarks, earthworms and moles, hermit crabs and seahorses. Dust could not praise you, so you gathered it up, using it to shape us in your image that we might enjoy the gifts found in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. But we foolishly fell into the traps dug by death to capture us. You sent the prophets to us who through their words and actions reminded us that we had been shaped to be as upright as mountains. But we continue to allow sin to form us into molehills. 
Dismayed, you could have hidden your face, but you sent us your heart instead. So with those who are, whose nets are empty of hope and with those whose lives overflow with grace, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy are, are you, God who, who loves us, us more than these. Creatures of, of heaven, heaven, earth, and, and sea, join, join us in praising you. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. Blessed is the Lamb who is worthy. worthy. Hosanna, Hosanna in, the in the highest. Holy are you, God, who leads us by the hands of our shadowed lives, and blessed is Jesus Christ who feeds us life. When we cried, he came to wipe away our tears. When we were speechless, he taught us songs of praise. When we dressed in ashes, he gave us grace's garments. Though we loved sin and death more than we loved him, he went to the cross, filling death's nets with his spirit so its power over us might be emptied forever. The night before his death, he took bread. He broke it. He shared it with all his disciples, saying, this is me, the body that will be broken so I can share myself freely. Eat it and remember my love. After dinner, he took the cup and passed it around to all his disciples, saying, this is my blood, the life force poured out to bring grace to everyone Drink it and remember that you are forgiven. As we remember the lamb who is worthy, as we come to the lamb's feast this day, we sing of that mystery we call faith. Christ, Christ has, has died, died as broke, God's heart broke. broke. Christ was, was raised as all creation sang in joy. Christ will come again as we are gathered in the fullness of time. Even I was reading the traditional version of those words at some point, so I, I understand you. Um, lead us by the hand, gracious God, to the table where the bread, the cup, and the guests all receive the spirit which is poured out upon them. As we come to eat of the bread, may its brokenness give us strength to stand up to persecutors of the most vulnerable, to challenge those who love themselves more than the frightened and the lonely. May the cup of life fill us with the courage to feed those who hunger for grace and hope, to tenderly care for those discarded by the world. Then when the lamb gather, gathers those of every time and place for the feast of joy in eternity, we will fall down and worship you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen.
bread, the body of Christ given for you.
You may rise in body or in spirit for our closing hymn, which is number 369 in the red hymnal, Blessed Assurance. Receive now this benediction. Go forth from this place to receive whatever you need to be fed, trusting in the community that is full of Christ's grace and love to support you and feed you as you need, and in so doing that you may also feed the other sheep along with you as we nurture each other in this wonderful community of grace and share God's blessing now and always. Amen. Amen.